Ukrainians did a counter-attack in Bakhmut and regained the control over a major road within this city. In addition to that, Russian forces are suffering massive losses and it is estimated they are losing as little as 568 soldiers on average per day. And ultimately, there were some delays before this Ukrainian grand counteroffensive, but rest assured, it will happen sooner than you think. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and see some most recent footage, beginning with this incredibly cringe material. So today I wanted to share with you just this one single picture of this extreme ultimate Z patriot, the scourge of Ukraine, the obliterator of the West and the protector of the motherland. Or at least this is what he thinks he is in his mind. And I'm pretty positive that this particular guy will be extremely proud of him, as long as we know who is the real one and in which bunker he hides. Because as of right now, it is estimated that Putin has two almost identical bunkers, the one is near Moscow and another one is near Sochi. But as you can see from this picture, there are some small details, which allow us to assume that there are at least, once again, two of them. And speaking about Putin, on May 9th there will be a victory parade across Russia, which is basically the most favorite celebration of Putin, because it dramatically increases the patriotism among the people. But, well, this time the Red Square in Moscow will be closed for regular people from April 27th until May 10th. And, I mean, isn't this supposed to be a people's holiday, not just Putin's and his inner circle holiday? And, well, this kind of perfectly shows you how much closer Putin wants to be with his people, or, in fact, how much he hates them. Putin is not the only Russian authority which lives in his small separated uh, world, because another one, as you might have guessed, is Dmitry Medvedev, who recently one of his statements, he said that Russia had no other choice other to start this special military operation to prevent NATO from expanding. <laughs> Once again, Russian authorities are juggling between two main objectives. The first one is stop NATO from expanding, and the second one is to clear Ukraine from Nazis. And they just use either of these narratives whenever it's more convenient. But besides uh, this statement, <laughs> Dmitry Medvedev made another one. He once again threatened the world with the nuclear attack. And this time he said that the Western countries should not be like so relaxed. Because in case Russia wants, we will use nukes without hesitation. Do you think he is serious this time? If yes, probably this is one of the very first times you are hearing Medvedev threatening the world with the nuclear attack. But if it's a no for you, then can you please like this video and subscribe to my channel? Because let's see how many more ridiculous attempts to bluff he will make. You can also follow my Instagram, because we're getting very close to 4,000 people in that community, so let's see if we can make it before the end of the week. Right now, let's briefly talk about the final preparations of Ukraine for this grand counteroffensive, and also why Russians brought one of their newest tanks to Ukraine, but they will not use it. That is a very interesting question. And after this, we'll talk about the most recent developments in the Ukrainian counterattack in the south of Ukraine. And so yes, first of all, America will stop buying Switchblade 300 drones for Ukraine, but instead they will start buying Switchblade 600 with the new updated range of approximately 50 kilometers and a much bigger warhead. Next we have this picture somewhere from an undisclosed location in Ukraine, which shows that Ukrainians are aligning their combat military machines, waiting for this order to start advancing. And in the meantime, Ukrainians continue to practice using the Western military equipment, such as, for example, the American armored personnel carrier M2A2 Bradleys. 
But wait, there is more, because Ukrainians, besides just relying on the Western military equipment, they also developed their own. And as you can see from this video, they created this, I would call it a turret, which will be protecting the front lines. And as always, the full versions of these videos of this Western military equipment and machines will be available on my Patreon, along with some other uncensored footage. The link is down below and there is one week of free trial. Just a couple more words and then we'll talk about the South. And first of all, recently it has been mentioned that a general mobilization has been announced in Ukraine, but rest assured it's not a bad thing. This only means that Ukrainians are trying to get as many soldiers as possible to make the counteroffensive chances even more successful. I mean, it is totally different from the mobilization Russian style, where I would say 90% of conscripts are forced to go to Ukraine. And in addition to that, Russians have also some ridiculous cases of people going to the army. Such as, for example, there was this 50-year-old guy who got called by scammers trying to get money out of him. And whenever this guy realized that these were basically the scammers, the scammers somehow got access to this government Gososlugi web portal <laughs> and registered him as a volunteer to go to Ukraine. And guess what? This 50-year-old guy got summons to the military. But ridiculous stories from the Russian forces do not end here. And for example, recently, one of the newest model tank, T-14 Armata, was allegedly brought to Ukraine, somewhere from the region of Belgorod to the east of the country. But here is a huge but. This tank will not be used on the front lines, it will only be shooting somewhere away from these points of contact. So my question is, why would they want to do it? And the answer, I think it is pretty logical. Whenever this tank is going to be engaged in combat activities, the Russian propagandists will start filming it, producing videos, will be talking about this in our evening news, about the superiority of this tank over all the western analogs. And obviously, then this tank will be a hero during victory parade on May 9th. And now, as promised, let's talk about some one of the most recent developments of this Ukrainian counteroffensive in the south, and then we'll talk about even more optimistic news from Bakhmut. And first of all, right here we have this video, allegedly somewhere from Zaporozhye region, which just once again shows you the current conditions of the road and why the offensive is not yet possible. Then we have the reports by the Ukrainian intelligence, and these reports claim that Russians are trying to evacuate their infiltrators, collaborators and other important military personnel from this point of contact in the Zaporozhye region, specifically from cities such as Energodar, Michura, Vodyane and Kamenska Dniprovska. In addition to that, Ukrainian civilians who right now live on temporarily occupied territory in Kherson are trying to evacuate themselves, and Russian authorities are making it extremely complicated. For example, there was a story of a man trying to text the city administration, headed by the Russian infiltrators, and asking to provide them with the bus because he has a family. And long story short, the response from the Russians was that, at this very moment, buses are unavailable, thank you for, attention. Thank you for your attention, good luck. But on the other hand, from the actual Ukrainian authorities, they are asking the residents of Kherson to refrain from using aquatic vehicles, such as, for example, the boats, because Russians at this very moment are being extremely cautious, and if they see a boat, f I mean, crossing or trying to cross Dnipro river, they very well might assume that this must be Ukrainians, and they can open fire. According to some other representatives of the Ukrainian government, recently the intensity of attacks of Russians against civilian objects, especially infrastructure, kinda decreased, which allows them to assume that Russians right now are trying to collect as many missiles as possible for potentially another big attack in the future, probably even during the winter, with there being second attempt to disrupt the energy infrastructure of Ukraine. 
But then, according to Natalia Hominyuk, such attack might in fact come on May 9th, once again during the victory parade across entire Russia, because Russians they do love symbolism, and this will be just perfect for Putin. And now let's go to the east of Ukraine, where recently Ukrainians started showing very promising early signs of their successful offensive in the future. But first of all, right here we have a video from Kupiansk, and as you can see, Russians targeted another civilian object. Next we go down along already familiar front line Kupiansk, Svatove, Kriminna. And according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, recently it was Ukrainians who did some marginal gains next to Kriminna. And as we go to the hottest spot in the entire country, Bakhmut, right here we have a video from the inside of this city showing you the current condition of Bakhmut and that it is still being destroyed until now every single day. And as always, the full version of this video will be on my Patreon, the link is down below. And speaking about Bakhmut, according to the representative of the Ukrainian army, General Sirsky, who is a pretty frequent visitor to this city, he said that recently Ukrainians, besides just protecting themselves, they're also engaging in the counter-offensive. And I mean, just think about it, it is Bakhmut, the only place where Russians are relatively successful, and if Ukrainians are able to do counter-attacks, how much better it's gonna get across the rest of Ukraine. In addition to that, he made the statement that according to his intelligence, Ukrainians were able to fight and push back Russians further away from one of the major and critical roads inside Bakhmut. And this road was used by Ukrainians to resupply themselves and bring in and out soldiers. So once again, re-establishing the control over this highway is extremely crucial for the future success of Ukrainians. The general also mentioned that Bakhmut became a critical point for Ukrainians because Russians they just simply cannot give up and they send waves after waves after waves of soldiers every single day which allows Ukrainians to deplete their numbers very fast and such as for example according to the British intelligence the average losses of Russians every single day are estimated to be at 568 people and these are just the average losses, with the majority of them coming from the east, specifically around Bakhmut area. But besides military personnel, Russians are also losing a lot of military equipment, such as, for example, in the last 24 hours alone, they lost 5 tanks, 12 armored personnel carriers, 14 artillery systems, and 31 other military machines. And just like I already mentioned previously, one of the main reasons why Ukrainians hold Bakhmut, it is because they are able to eliminate Russian soldiers at accelerated rate, but then also not to let Russians expand their invasion in the east, because as of right now, this city is some kind of a choking point, it is located a little bit higher geographically, it is surrounded by rivers, which basically means capturing Bakhmut potentially allows Russians to open another front lines which can expand all the way to Slavyansk and Kramatorsk, maybe even Lysychansk and Severodonetsk. And because this city is located geographically higher, surrounded by waters, and there are many multi-floor buildings inside this city, assaulting such point requires a high degree of military skill, <laughs> which as you can already imagine, Russians do not possess at all. The logical question would be, if everything looks so good for Ukrainians, when does this counteroffensive then will begin? At this very moment the weather conditions are not yet 100% perfect, Ukrainians are still expecting the final batches of the military equipment from the west, and also the most recent leakage of Pentagon documents significantly slow down Ukrainians. But we do have already the counter-attacks of Ukrainians in the south, in Kherson region. We do have Ukrainians who were able to stall Russians in the east. And we do have Ukrainians who besides defending and protecting themselves, they started engaging in the counter-offensive, even 
in the places such as Bakhmut. At this very moment, Ukrainians simply cannot rush these decisions and just do the counteroffensive because everyone expects them to do this. Because to be honest, this will be one of the best chances in years to end this war once and for all. And because of this, they have to be extremely careful. They have to be prepared 110%. Because in the very unlikely case, if Ukrainians, they fail, the West might see this as a weakness. The general narrative will be that Ukrainians were not able to achieve any significant progress, even though we gave them all these weapons and military support. So, I mean, what's the point to continue doing this? They might even consider to push Ukrainian authorities to already talk with Russians, most likely not on the best terms for Ukraine, just for the sake to finally end this war. But to be honest, at this very moment, this is the very last chance and hope for the Russian authorities at saving their faces. And this is what they want the rest of the world to think as well. But nevertheless, the Ukrainian counteroffensive will happen. And according to some Western sources, it can happen as early as in May, which is only just one, two weeks from now. It is also estimated that 12 Ukrainian brigades of 4,000 soldiers each, bringing the total number to almost 50,000 Ukrainians, are prepared to attack. And nine of these brigades were personally prepared by NATO allies. And Zelensky himself appointed the supervisor of each of these brigades among the people he personally trusts the most. And the reason for this is to minimize all the possibilities of corruption at the same time so Zelensky can also personally control the performance of Ukrainian forces and just so in general everyone within the Ukrainian highest authorities will be working together towards a common goal. And to be honest, you do not see the same level of preparations from the Russian forces. All they kinda trying to do is to focus on Bakhmut, the city which they cannot take already in nine months, even though the original goal was to destroy Kyiv in three days. And taking into consideration that Ukrainians are already counterattacking in the south, we can expect that the total, ultimate, grand, liberating counteroffensive across entire Ukraine will begin pretty much any day now. And if you don't want to miss this as soon as it starts happening, just please consider subscribing to my channel, it only takes one click. The best way to support my work and unlock some exclusive content will be through my Patreon. You can also become my channel member and unlock exclusive channel badges and emojis or just use a PayPal link. All different everything can be found on the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tarchi, and see you tomorrow.